Hi, I'm Trevi. And I'm Kate. And welcome back to our podcast called Six Six Feet Feet Above. (laughs) That was amazing. Thanks. Pentatonics core. Yeah, but honestly, we have more than one person, more than two people today. We have our first motherfucking guest. It is the one and only Tana Mojo. Thank you. Thank you. Do we they're all the, clapping the, off camera like they're being held at gunpoint. Yeah. I, love, no. I lived for that. Guys, if you are watching this on YouTube and you're trying to fall asleep or you're driving, we have an audio version on Apple, Spotify, wherever you want to listen to your podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the official Six Feet Above YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up and leave us a comment because it helps us grow. We fucking love you. Do it. I'm not used to this audience, Laura. Well, thank not at you all. so much for having me, you guys. I of just, course. I'm obsessed with this podcast and everything Aww. that both of you are doing. Thanks. And I'm just yeah. really fucking proud of you. And I think it's going to go to the fucking moon. And I'm so happy to be here. Sorry and thank for you for comforting me during my spirals about this podcast. Not yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that you being <laughs> a perfectionist is a part of who you are and it's amazing but sometimes I just watch you be so hard on yourself and I'm like you are the goat like you are oh the most God. talented you've taught me so fucking much over the years like you you know your shit oh, T I, I love, love you. that can you compliment me now um, no yes, literally that, I want you to like get out a whip and do some weird shit to me okay right I don't know what this podcast has done to me but I'm like suddenly I need to dominate men do like spin all the on them get the heels and walk on and them and I That's must like, yeah people make money at that I don't know why everyone's know. you know everyone, everyone know. should be doing that Let's like go spin on a man. Okay. Oh my god! No, I was was it was it me and you talking about this about like how like I would love to be a dominatrix, but just like by nature and by trauma, I'm just like <laughs> by nature and by trauma. I'm crazy. just like at the end of the day, I'm like, Daddy, you're a sub. Oh yeah, my god, have you seen? Right? Wait, 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 wait. This is I'm not used to this dynamic. Hold on. Wait, what? Well, now I want to know. You're a sub. I don't like saying that. I don't like. No, I don't want to classify me. But like, I think at the end of the day, like I control, like you said, I'm a perfectionist. So it's like, I do things how I want. I do things my way. And I basically lay the land in my real life. But at the end of the day, like when it's in bed, I'm just like, I want to starfish, like handle it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm (laughs) done. I handle shit all day. And I think it's like, that is like such a kink for a lot of like powerful people to then want to be dominated because it's like opposite. Right. You know, all I mean, the finance like, men want to be pegged. Say, yeah. yeah. Like the six. <sighs> the fo- finance men want to be pegged is mm, so no, real. It's real. Like the, I think one of the weirdest things I've learned over time with my transition and finding men and dating in LA is that like, it is, it was so surprising to me in the beginning, but it's like the six, four fucking conservative construction or like CEO. And Pookie then, looks real fire tonight. Oh, is that the, that couple? Oh, it's definitely <laughs> conservative, right? That just came out. I don't know. Oh, it's, they've got it. I know, I know that reference. I know it. Okay, yeah, no, no. But I'm just saying, like, and then they're like messaging me, <laughs> and then I'm like, they're like, fuck me in the ass. I'm like, yeah. whoa. That is so crazy. That is just like a crazy turnaround. It's, but it's, it's probably the same thing. Like, they probably go out and project such, like, I'm so hard. And then in reality, they want to be like spanked. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think everyone What's like deserves that? to like, I want to pick up a new weird kink. Like, I don't have it yet. Mm -hmm. I'm taking options. If you guys have anything that you want to, like, let me know about. But, like, Um, I just think. Wait, so since you are powerful, do you like to be dominated in the bedroom? Yes. I've done. I've done my fair share of dominating, though. I think. Yeah. I just like to do it all. (laughs) Yeah. So you you have, like, dominated before? You dom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's not, like, my go to. Like, on a Tuesday night, I'm not like, oh, my God, where's the ball gag? Bend over. Like, you know what I mean? That's, (laughs) like, a little bit. Dick, but right. we'll teach their own. Don't yeah, don't want to kink shame. I don't have any kinks. Oh. I I think like I like dominating and submissive kind of stuff is just yeah. pretty like natural. But like, yeah, but I you would, take it there. Like it, if your dream man hit you with a semi truck, like you would just bust. I, <laughs> yes, not, bust. Not no. She's, <laughs> I love she that loves word. Bust. <laughs> I um, oh, this is the best day. Yeah, it's the best day ever, <laughs> especially if I get hit by a semi truck by Central Sea. Not mm. kidding. I just want everyone to know right now that we are sitting in a completely pitch black room, and yeah. the only lights on us are these ones, and that yeah. we can't see anything. It's giving like Dateline. Yeah, like I feel like I feel like we're sixty minutes. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, we built this set today for this very special occasion. This woman, that Tana, which is so crazy, I would have shot. A podcast with you out of an Arby's, you know. I appreciate. Right, that. I bet there's a lot of like empty ones. Arby's. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think there's on. like a lot that are just like for lease now? 
Didn't, wasn't there like a I scandal? hope so. I've just never. I, I but I just can't. I I like roast beef, but I don't want to admit it. And I don't think there should be an entire chain restaurant surrounding it. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's like when um, like a, you, I was watching something like this makeup video today, and it was like when a makeup company has a really good product they make other products surrounding it using that same name right like Too Faced needs like a better than sex primer and it's like we just and love I'm the like, mascara okay that how many just... ways of roast beef can you flip it turn it bop it twist it that is it's so real like you we know? don't need a roast beef slider Nashville hot chicken trio like right. it's like you know what I mean I yeah. just yeah I don't know what it is mm -mm. I really don't well hello hello I'm so glad we got you Two days before you leave for tour? I, I know, knew wow. I had to do this before I went because it would be months, if not, if I didn't do it right now. And yeah. That really does just attest to how much I love you because every we minute counts it. right now. But to be honest with you, I'm so happy to be here. My entire day has just been a complete and utter fucking shit show. And I just had seven people royally bend me over do you want to vaguely Ew. get into it or you i do want to vaguely get into okay. it sister i Please. i will could have better spent my time in the last couple hours like just playing yahtzee like it, it's like it was just that right. bad i don't i don't think i can say what i did i just you can did I, can i slander that's fucked up right yeah. you can we i mean we can A bleep slight, names slight. We here's can. what i'm gonna fucking say oh? everyone <laughs> moves to this city and they just slap a title on like they just wake up and they're, I'm a stylist okay right. is the stylist in the fucking room with us right like just get that to the extent of a lot of people a production etc you know it's like yeah. the makeup artist I think was like blind in one eye and I think the stylist was dressing me in like forever 21 <laughs> clearance from a couple years ago the photographer probably had cataracts who did the lighting <laughs> Helen Keller it just was right. one of those where everything was like dominoes effect yeah I just um yeah just, so I'm really happy to be here. I got glam, and I'm happy to use yeah. it. Somewhere. Yeah, it looks like you can utilize you know? that. Yeah, you know, I'm, they paid for it. I'm assuming, and um, you got a free glam. I paid yeah. for my glam. Oh, oh. <laughs> and there's something about paying for your glam to get on that just. Yeah, I love the lore of you meeting your current boyfriend. You like literally vorked out like. <laughs> No makeup on the beach, like. Were you drunk when you met? Yeah, I had to have we been live. drunk. When, yeah, absolutely. It was, it was only. I really like loved that vibe that he only. Right. Our first like two weeks of hanging out, he didn't see me with makeup or, and I broke my toe within the first like thirty minutes of meeting this oh man. God, so I was like bleeding toenail? and crying. I don't have a toenail. I don't I, have a thumbnail. Oh, it's such a. We don't talk about it enough. Literally losing a nail. It is so painful. I would rather lose like a distant family member. Oh. I've always said that. It's just it's it's traumatic. It's traumatizing. Yeah, so it was it was good only up from there. I don't really think that the Hawaiians like makeup and all that anyway. No. They're so hot. It's it's you crazy. The baddie. It is so <sighs> crazy what happens on that island and the people that come out of it. Yeah. It's just like right. yeah, no, it was I was getting real. My feelings were getting real hurt when I was out there spray tan washed off, you know, day yeah. six. Gets Pale wildly humbling. Do you tan? Well, yeah. Do like, I, like if you were in the like if you sit in the sun long enough, do you like get mm -hmm. tan? Yeah, I don't get tan. But I just never sit in the sun long enough at all. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, it's just like I'm hot. Yeah, I'd rather just self tan. Yeah, I feel like I'm in an air fryer when I'm tanning for too long. <laughs> Ten long. Yeah. So I'm like, you know? ding. <laughs> <laughs> Not kidding. Okay, <laughs> so um, tour. I want to talk about tour for a second. Mm -hmm. What you've been on a few tours now, and mm -hmm. we've toured together. We have toured together. Oh, for oh what? My God. L literally couldn't tell you. I'm not getting <laughs> gun to my head. Do you want head? to tell the story <laughs> of the onesie? <laughs> oh, of course I do. Okay, I can't wait. It's, <gasps> I love this story. Um, I hold near and dear to my heart almost. Imagine a, a metaphorical locket, and I hold this story in a locket <laughs> in my heart. Um, well, seriously, though, gun to my head, I couldn't tell you what company that was for. Um Shout out. It's funny when you start working in this industry for a long time, like the the tale of the fallen yeah. companies. Where are they now? We just went on this tour, and I think at the time, digital touring agencies were definitely a new thing. Okay. Like, I think that people who worked in traditional media realized that there was money in the, in let's take these influencers on a tour. We were talking about but, that earlier. And now, obviously, it's, you know, it's, 
a whole it's it's a whole different thing. It's gotten so much better and yada yada yada. But at the time it was just Joe Schmo would get tired of <laughs> his desk job and be like, Oh, I'm gonna start an influencer touring company and then But smart, you know. You, yeah. Yes. In theory. But Correct. then when it came all down to the logistics, you know, the, the, even just the people we were with, it was like seven random influencers, different walks of life, momagers left and right. I think people from like TLC, My Strange Addiction were on the tour, you know, like <laughs> just, in cargo with their cameras. Wait, just, what were you doing though? Was it? And then that, that's the gig in the gag. <laughs> that's the lore because we don't, I don't actually remember And or then know. They, you'd get there to your show, okay. uh, your show that people bought tickets for and they would just hand you a microphone and be like, do your big one. Wow. <laughs> and figure it out. Did we like... We, I think that tour we did like live Q and A's, which you even sing? that is just crazy. I did not f-ing sing. No, no, it was just like we did meet and greets. Me and they were. But, this was also okay. MagCon era, so it was okay. more like meet and greet centered, which made sense. But right, um, but it was like what was it like a thousand, fifteen hundred people each time we were doing meet and greets. Like we were meeting people for like four hours at a time. Yeah, it was a really, really long time. And then afterwards, well, they would all just sit down as you met them. So it was super awkward. And they just stare and watch you. And then you would, then you would stand on the stage and you would answer their questions, which were all just like, my photo was blurry. Can I, we take another one Can you follow me? Like it made no sense. And I think that soon into the tour, you really realized that that was the shtick and you were just kind of. What was the shtick? Like that that, and your just level of giving a fuck just slowly got less and less and less. Like, I think the first tour, first couple shows, you know, you were in a, an outfit and you were semi-present and Ooh. you were, <laughs> you know, you were, you were giving it some effort. And by the end of this tour on the final show, Trevi did the final show in Blackout Drunk. And oh, I, I mean, was going to ask, were you drinking at the time? One, I, <laughs> mean, I had a Tito's bottle in my beige MCM backpack the entire tour. Okay, and by MCM. the end, I did my big one. And I just mean fucking <laughs> obliterated. <laughs> and it was it was really, really funny. I, I yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> I say that with um, caution. But um, no caution on this podcast. Yeah, just so. No funny and you decided that for the final show you wanted to do your big one and that your outfit would be a super mario onesie pajamas stop um, yeah, in, no but with six inch stilettos thank you very much so you <laughs> so oh my me. God, i love it super maria and then and then we <laughs> we do the whole show the, everyone i think too just kept asking you about your outfit and you were like it's a me mario no, i don't yeah. even know yeah. what was said but what really got me, and I have the most beautiful videos of this if you want them, I don't know if okay, you do, slay. is that you went to the airport like this. I you wanted to travel like that. home. With the stiloidos. Mm-hmm. Stiloidos and super morio. Uh, <laughs> you're out the, of control. The mental image I have of you <laughs> just not even holding your body up in the TSA scanner. And, and I think we were in like Texas. So every TSA worker was just real. They, they I don't think they'd ever seen... The lore. Like, and <laughs> it was Get out of my fucking gut or my fucking <laughs> I'm like, well And it was just beautiful. We almost died that tour too. Do you remember that? I was talking about this with Hunter the other day. Wait, we did? Why? It's crazy if you don't remember this. I I really like was it was dark. But I don't want to memory shame you. You know I don't remember anything at all for similar reasons. So Wait, none of us. What what, what was the um, gig, we the had a show in Texas? And we started our meet and greet normal, just like <laughs> every single day. And like like we said, after we would take the photos, the people would come up and sit in the seats, you know, and wait for us and fill the theater. So and towards the end of the meet and greet, like six guys come. And this was right after. And it, our demographic was very much really young kids, mainly girls. You could like spot the difference. Yes. I'm sure. And all these six grown men and they all looked exactly alike showed up and this was right after XX Tentacion had passed I promise there's a reason I'm saying oh, wow, that it wasn't okay. just a landmark of time um, <laughs> why don't I remember that? they were all wearing XX Tentacion shirts the same XX Tentacion shirt oh, and they all had God. big backpacks and just like hands in their shit and it was really like scary oh, my God, on and some then, like f***ed up like it just it, I mean think about that it's that just, doesn't that feel right scary. demo it's not like the, there shouldn't even be right. like big bags allowed. Yeah, in the and it's venue. like Daniel yeah. Cohn and like Bad Zach and us. Like right. it's just the the people. I don't think those people were giving wanting to meet us. Whatever. Yeah. And 
they meet us at the meet and greet. And I'm like scared, freaking out. You know, my paranoid ass. Was I'm I meeting them everyone, too? Or what? You met them. <laughs> Why do I? Okay. It's, I, I, I been the Mario back. Do they check bags day. when they walk in or no? I don't but know. It was at the movie time. theaters. Yeah. And this was also right after some weird. Yeah. It, like it was just I don't know my paranoia was and then they they go up and they sit and they're facing us and I'm just watching them the entire time and I'm super paranoid and then eventually they all take a paper out and they're holding up a paper with some type of symbol or sign or something like all six of them I start screaming and I like freak the out I right run now. out of the meet and greet well you sorry pause for a second but like you've had some weird experiences with people mm. showing up at your meet and greets doing weird things like the whole like mm. I, I we under like so you have like a not only I mean I guess you could technically say like a like a trauma of people like coming mm. and like trying to f with you whether it's for humor or whether it's actually <clears throat> dangerous safety right yeah. so it's like I can understand why something that just feels like you get a gut feeling for sure and um, now I like I take things so much more serious right. and have a million like protocols and stuff. But this wasn't the time. I also had management that didn't take me seriously. Yada yada yada. Um, and I made everyone evacuate the theater. Like everyone okay, in yeah, the crowd. Yeah. So that's crowd. What, what happened after. And then yeah. And then Jordan was just yelling at me like you're so f***ing stupid. And I was like I don't think so. But they were um, all. Yeah. I remember this. They were all six like holding up like. But do we ever find out what the symbol meant? Mm -mm. That is so scary. A man with a backpack is already terrifying. You mentioned a backpack. Like, no, like literally. A um, if a man like, this is bad and like everyone's going to get mad. But when a man walks into a movie theater, I'm like. <gasps> I, I pick my seat <laughs> like, accordingly. I, I freak, so And I, I count the steps up the stairs. I can't even I do imagine it how that feels. Like a meet and greet sounds terrifying. I get the paranoia yeah. every single time for sure. That Because you hope not, obviously. And like every, usually right. everyone's amazing yeah. and whatever. But like I like knock on wood and shit. Like I loved Christina Grimmy and like right. that. It was all really crazy. And yeah. Brooke and I were actually supposed to play the venue that she that that Did guy is just like find um, a big, like a different. No, it's actually it. really weird. Um, again, super knock on wood in this situation, but the venue that she got killed at, we were supposed to play, and then it was the only venue of our entire tour that we sold out so fast and it got upgraded. But isn't that strange that, that the wow. only venue change of our entire tour was that one? Yeah, kind of weird. that is weird. Who mm -hmm. knows? But I just like to make sure, like. I don't need a. It's all gonna right, be good. right, right, it's right. Be great. Are you yeah. excited though? I am really yeah, excited. I'm in the like stress, packing, sweating, screaming, crying, throwing up phase. Love, right. but the Shit second it, put it in a blender. The mm -hmm. second my feet touch down in New Orleans, I'm in tour mode and I'm right. excited yeah. for sure. I would love to tour with you on a bus one day. Even in that era, I would have loved that. You would have been really, really that. I you I would have been like peeing the bed. Like I could have been into it though. Right. Okay, New guess, kink. Yeah, I was about to say, I guess we found your kink. I don't think it can be Shit. pissed, though. I think when you do, you, you've been taking, like, your touring and your podcast and your work so seriously lately. And I, not only me, but, like, your fans have noticed. And I don't want to say technically that this is a sobriety podcast, but this is, like, uh, we talk a lot about, uh, about it and, yeah. like, mental health in general mm -hmm. because we both have our history um, mm -hmm. I know that you have been like taking a break from drinking mm -hmm. and everything like that. How has that been for you? And like, how has that affected the way you work, the way you interact with your friends mm -hmm. and et cetera? Well, you, I just want to say have helped me so much with my journey of my relationship with substance abuse. Yeah. And I, it's so cool how much you learned and how much you apply it and how knowledgeable you are and how willing you are to share that and the patience you have with other people. And it's it's really sick and it's admirable and it's you're just so smart. You know everything. Yeah. I, like I would rather call you than my doctor 99% of the time about anything ever. Not kidding, um, I wouldn't charge. Yeah, and it's it's great. It's amazing. <laughs> and um, I'm like, okay, so the neurochemistry of that is that literally. if you take that, it might interact with that receptor. Yeah. It's so sick though. It's awesome. And you just being so willing Thanks. to talk me to me or have the same conversation with me 75 times. Right. You know, is I really appreciate that. And, you know, I've like, I've talked about this. I think I'm either on or I'm off when it comes to everything in my life. I'm very like all or nothing, you know, like. Very extreme. Yeah, you know super I mean? extreme. Like I'm either dead f***ing sober or I'm blackout or I'm raging. And I I would love to find a balance. And I'm yeah. I'm on a quest right now to find balance. And yeah. find it after tour. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> no. Are you going to be sober no, the sure. entire tour? Yeah. Okay, nice. And. It's it's really good. I mean, sobriety is always really good. Like I I am working ten times harder. I'm really clear headed. Yeah. I am sleep. No, my sleep's ass. always off. Yeah, always awful. I mean, 
more clear headed. I, I, you know, I don't make decisions that I hate at, uh, far as often. I still make a few. Yeah. Cause... Like punching a guy in the face at the bar. She did that once. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. I was very mm-hmm. violent see, drunk. But see, when I hear about it through other people, I'm like, that's so camp. That's so kind. Okay, because when I hear about women punching men, okay, I feel like all I talk about is how much I hate men. I don't. It's my favorite Um, topic. But I'm like, okay, go off. But when it happens, when it happens to you, it literally is the most embarrassing thing ever. Yeah, and the anxiety of that and the The anxiety of that. Not remembering punching three men in the face is... It was three? It was three men. And one, one I tackled off a couch. And see, I'm smiling with nothing but admiration and love. um, I'm single. (laughs) um, But... I yeah, no, more. the balance is impossible. But what's the longest you've had sober? Um, I, I mean, probably like 80, 75, 75 days, actually. Yeah. I literally, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. The I think first, since yeah. I started ever drinking, yeah. Because, I mean, I grew up in Vegas. And once I started, of it course. was just so normalized. And then I moved here, and it's even worse. And yeah, that I says a lot. I can't imagine drinking here. Because um, I never drank in L.A. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's like and kind it's, of like dark yeah. and lonely. Yes. For me, like I like when you fall into, I think like a lot of people have a different experience. But um, when I was living in Hollywood by myself, like it just, it was so weird because I just like knew that the city was just moving and people were doing things like, and yeah. I felt like I was isolating so much that like I was in this city where I felt like like it's this magical place where all your dreams can come true and every mm-hmm. executive that I've ever yeah. wanted to meet is within miles from me mm. and it was just like it felt like everything was going on around me I, and I was just like this nucleus in this bubble just like yeah. destroying myself mm-hmm. I think that is a dark part of addiction when you feel like the world is going around you I experienced yeah. that with like yeah. pills and shit, and I, I really yeah. like I, I noticed that I was like life is going on and I'm just right. like here and that's my Xanax era True. Okay. my perky era my yeah. 2019 2020 all of that was yeah but that's, that's yeah. like that those years were just extra rough I mean there was more people I'm gonna cut this out if this statistic is not right but there was more people that died during COVID of mental health issues, overdose and suicide than actual COVID. I believe that. Yeah. And and just fentanyl. Right. Like so all scary. just, yeah. yeah, for sure. I also, I mean, you and I have talked at length about this, and I, but just growing up the way we grow up, like the way we grew up, like being thrown right. into the shit and then substances. Right. It, it can be a really scary path to go down for sure. Well, yeah, and entering a, cl- we were like entering clubs in LA when we were 16 and 40 year olds were offering us Coke like on the, can jump yeah i mean very yeah. crazy and the reason- i partied for just so motherfucking long like yeah, that was same. i i think with drinking i wasn't like an isolated drinker i just wa- i was chasing the party and the right. fun and the people that came with that and the escapism in that mm-hmm. d- regard you know yeah. and I, I still struggle i think with me being sober now i just i don't have as much fun i'm way more stressed yeah. i don't sleep as right. good like i i miss the the, the good the good things yeah. the, or what felt like the good things yeah. i guess um you know the chaos as well yeah but even just yeah. i don't know it, it is nice i don't know i don't want to get on people's sober journeys and stuff you no, know yeah. no, like, the first uh, eight months i was like this sucks i'm bored i'm never having sex again like mm-hmm. i feel so uncomfortable like it takes it took me like honestly a year to be like oh i love same. this life yeah same. and like, you saw me in my first oh, six girl. months she was fighting for her life mm-hmm. i was like in it new sucks. york i knew nobody she was the only person i knew in new york and like everyone else in the house but it's like if you if like even just for anyone listening like if sobriety or just taking a step back from alcohol is something you want to do like you gotta like wait for like months because there's gonna be it like this so, it takes there's so like this up 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 like this initial dopamine release and then you like kind of plateau and you're like okay i'm like bored i'm working i'm doing all this shit, but it's like mm. i'm so fucking stressed i don't know how to relax the only mm. thing that can relax and it's like the security the safety blanket of mm. always knowing that like oh well if i'm like you know stressed i can take a shot or something and yeah. then mm-hmm. it's like you can't have that safety blanket and i mm-hmm. think like once you realize that like letting go and relying on yourself and your mm. brain and your coping skills whatever that may mean yeah. It's like kind of such a beautiful thing because yeah. you do feel this sense of freedom. It's like, I remember I always left the house with like a shooter in my purse. I always had like, mm. I mean, I was fucking insane, you know, keep in mind a baggie of ketamine in there. It's like, just in case I had yeah. a little bit of anxiety. Yeah. Um, 
And that thought was in the back of my mind still until I was like a year sober. And I would never admit it to anyone until now. But like, yeah. I always felt this need that like I needed a safety blanket. Mm -hmm. Do What are you doing now to relax when you get in like... I'm smoking a lot of weed. Yeah. So it's like which California is just kind sober. Of, yeah. yeah, I'm California sober, which is I, I understand the negative relationship with replacing one thing with another and yeah. yada yada and, you know, figuring that out and navigating that and... Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm doing my best to do my best. I think I, it has wildly changed my interest though and in realizing how many things you're not interested in when you're sober. I, every time I go sober, I realize that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to go out if I'm not drinking. I don't, I hate half yeah. of these people that I would hang out with Isn't when I'm funny? up. It's so and you just crazy, see the yeah. world so 2020 and you like, you really realize yeah. like, and so it is about picking up new interests and finding new things that excite you and relax you and yeah. et cetera. And I'm, I'm excited for that, that journey. And I, I don't, I don't want to be sober forever, but I right. do yeah. want to find a way to possess more balance yeah. if I'm in the realm. It's of such a, it's such a big thing with a question mark over it. Right. Because it's like, there is back to like the extremism like you either have to be completely dry or like as an addict like me it's like i have mm. to be completely dry or i have yeah. to go all in absolutely and i we, think that's kind of how i am for sure and it's yeah. like this not even this country but this planet like we know so much science and psychology and we figured out so many things in this world and so many advances and ai and whatever right but it's it's so funny that like one of the leading causes of just collapses everywhere is mental health issues. And we have the pills, right? And we have the therapists out there. But like at the end of the fucking day, like if you think about it, we're chemical all chemical makeup. What? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Literal. But at the end of the day, like we really don't know how to cure mental health things. Like we know how to manage them, mm. but we don't like. What I'm trying to say is like, it's our brain trying to figure itself out, mm -hmm. right? Because if we're figuring out something about um, a real life problem, that's like a situation that you're using your brain in. And it's like, it's almost like it feels like uh, it's an error. Yeah. It's like your brain trying to figure your brain out yeah. for the rest of the world. And it's, it's, it's such you a mind. You start fuck. glitching. It's such a mind. Because yeah. we really, truly, like, if someone's depressed, or something it's like okay here take prozac yeah if you stop the prozac it's like you're back to being depressed yeah that is so crazy trying like, to figure out why your chemicals are the way they are i've done a decent amount of research about that with when it comes to alcoholism and it it is so crazy because it's like i was just explaining this to someone the other day they're like why can't you have one or two drinks or two or three drinks and i'm like i don't think you yeah. understand that like the second that my brain feels that dopamine from that like it's i over it's over. Like it's I, over, babe. I, yes, over. I, I <laughs> want as much as possible until I literally like disappear. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. that it's like, I, I would just love a way to fix that. And there really isn't one. So yeah. I wonder if I ever will. Have, I, yeah. I tried for so long. Yeah. I tried like literally everything and yeah, nothing works. I have a question for you. Yay. <laughs> I have a question for you. If they ever, yeah. I, I, Cause I know your answer, but I want to know your yeah. answer. If they figured out addiction, and they've, you know, found a cure for it where an addict can be a normie again. Would you go and approach that cure and drink normally again? No. I don't think I would either. Sober. What? I love being sober. I never thought I'd say that. I was like, it's so fucking stupid. It's lame. Like, it, everyone's yeah. embarrassing. And I'm embarrassing now, but, like, I don't care. You're embarrassing in, like, a fucking oh. goofy, hot like an unhinged, way. yeah. Whatever. Right, like, dominatrix. Like, you fucking Oh my god. Sign you. me up. <laughs> so, but, so, but would you or would you? Yes. Okay. And I that's, just, that honesty. that's just, I appreciate the honesty. And, you know, I would love to, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I just, I mean, but if I answered yes, all the comments would be like, oh my god, she's got a relapse. No, but I really miss weed sometimes. I'll be okay, honest, you. You're a big weed girl. I loved weed. Like, I, I just like, have you ever masturbated after smoking weed? It, everything <laughs> after smoking weed. Cause, like, I could Get not rails. bust for a year when really? I got sober. Were you was, on um, SSRIs? No, I would just always smoke weed. And yeah. that would like get me in the mood. And I was like, okay, so my sex drive is gone. I literally gained 40 pounds. Wait, weed makes you horny? It did. 
That's crazy. And now I like my my sex drive is so like up and down. Do you have a consistently high sex drive? No. Okay. Kinda. I'm jealous I don't know. of the people that do. Actually, kinda. Kinda. Maybe it's because you like like the person you're dating. But this oh. is a first. Oh. <laughs> this isn't this isn't the first? No, this is a first. Like the first person she's dated that like, she's like. I like feel like I've never dated someone that I'm like, I really like. Sorry. I, if like, anything, I would why. be dating someone that I hated but still want to get fucked. I could yeah. uh, separate the two, which maybe is horrible. That is horrible. But no. well, there's such a difference. Like, there's people that you just want to like hug. <laughs> and, I'm like serious. Like, there's people that you just want to like hug and like love and like talk and share your life with. And then there's other people that you're like, oh my god, you're so fucking hot. I just want to bend <laughs> over like your little girl. <laughs> and it's like, where, <laughs> where is the mix? I want both of that in one person yeah. because there's. Can you imagine? Could imagine that would be crazy. Imagine all yeah. the people. <laughs> it is like the hardest thing in the world to find. I can't even think about the amount of people where I was like, "We should just because I don't want to hear you talk." Right? Like you know, which is great hack if you need to do it. Yeah. But yeah. were you f- on the first that. meet type shit? Will I? How, like is type this shit. relationship? Do, yeah, I think we did. I think we f- the day we met. That's because inspirational. We, but like, we, I don't always do that. I just think with him, I was like, well, because I thought it was just like, I'm in Hawaii, you're in Hawaii, you're hot. We have this right. connection. That's fine. I, because I'm, when I'm, you know, going on dates with guys and stuff, like I have this idea in my head that I have to be extremely like moderated. I I can't mm. kiss. And I mean, you've given me all the advice, right? Like you tell me, you're like, don't even kiss him. Don't even. You're Dating like, apps. Yeah. I feel, you're I'm like, such, don't even look at him. Yeah. yeah. I think with dating apps, it's so hard because they already feel like they have a level of accessibility to you that if you organically met someone, you wouldn't have. It was like, I, all I had to do was like this person. And now, now I have her in front of me and yada, yada. So it's like, it's and different. I just dating. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's like, I don't. I personally don't feel like I know someone well enough off of a dating app. I, because, I don't dating but app. I swear to God, if it was someone I knew and we had one mutual friend, I'm like, let's go. Like, right. I, it's more of like it's a, a me. It's, it's more of a wholesome feeling when you meet someone in real life. And that's mm. just like point blank period. Like, yeah. But I've been meeting and hearing stories about a lot of couples lately that, that do fuck on, the, on first the first meet. Thing. And yeah. I'm like, and y'all mm. are still together like years later. And I'm over here like with this hinge man, like, don't even fucking kiss me. Mm. I think it... It really doesn't. Like, at the end of the day, if you're meant to date someone, you're right. meant to connect, whether you fuck in the first minute or a fucking six months later. I don't think it really, you know, if they want you, they want you. Right. If he's and judging you for that, loser. Yeah, it's 100%. He did it too. Right. Yeah. He's ran through. But for sure. I know. Every time. They I love her. Think, I know. <laughs> like, I'm they so don't got pissed. They don't I watched think her. about it that way, though. They're like, another pokemon yeah. like it's and then we're over here like i lost oh a part my of my word. soul <laughs> yeah. yeah it is it is wild we're so emotional no we're so that. emotional and i like i was hooking with this guy the other night and he's just like all right let's fuck now and i'm like oh i don't okay. think you understand like also, i don't say that the girl right. the, the literal girl wherewithal but, <laughs> but i'm so protective i don't think i've said my body count on this podcast before okay so i've had with five people ever in my 25 years of living us too <laughs> and i i'm so protective about that area <laughs> hey, Diva. Me too. right <laughs> i just like i'm super super protective over that area and i have no, obviously i have like yeah. trauma with that shit, but like i almost oh, this sounds like me being such a fucking whore but like i almost want to like be, be less protective over it um because i believe that i deserve to have like good absolutely yeah you know? i think it's about like mentally separating the two like because you were just saying the like catching them like pokemon thing i think that i got to a point where i went way too far with that where i was like so down the rabbit hole of like i'm gonna be the guy and i'm gonna play all these guys and i just yeah. want to hook up and like right. i yada yada but i want that mentality i want to play people but it's a cold <laughs> that mentality can also be scary there's, yeah. I, I think it's good to have a percentage of that mentality, yeah. but fully, it, girls and people that are fully like that, it's like they got hurt. Yeah. yeah. And they're, you know what I mean? And there, there's sure. a balance. I think if you go into something with someone and think, I just want sex, no expectations, and you genuinely believe that, it's good. It's scary yeah. when you say you just want to get fucked though, and you low key are emotional about it. Yeah. yeah or really. you want, but it's all normal. It's a, I don't know. I think it the dating normal. world is. The so dating hard. world is so 
fucked now with yeah. just the way social media and access and too much of it is. It's all fucked. It is. You just hope you can find someone that you have a good time with for whatever amount and of time. And LA dating is. is horrendous. Absolutely. Yeah. I had to outsource. Yeah, I had to, absolutely. I had to outsource. outsource. And we need to go to Hawaii for real. Anywhere mm-hmm. else. But like yeah. even my last boy, real boyfriend before him was from Vegas. Like I just, I gave up like That's on LA men because it's like every, we all move here. Hear me out, okay? okay? And this is one of those hypocritical standpoints because okay. in my head, girls are Mute perfectly her? fine. Not okay. kidding. <laughs> um, as a girl, this is so fine in camp and cunt to do. But okay. as a man, I just, everyone who moves to LA moves to LA because for the most part, at least in our scene, moves here because they're like, I want to be something. I am something special. Take I should be seen. I. Yeah. Everyone look at me. I should be famous. I'm the sh- it. And so every guy here has that mentality so yeah. hard. It's so yeah. weird. Like, the, yeah. ooh, it's kind of, it's so cut for girls because it's like, oh, yeah. yeah, slay Diva Queen, go chase your dreams. And yeah. then I'm like, okay, why are you at the famous birthdays office? Yeah. And no, it just uh, as a man, you know, and it, and it just, it's all of it. The, all these. Go to war. Right. I don't know. Well, why would you trust someone with your secrets or your vulnerability when they like take everyone else's and pour it out on other people? Truthfully. Yeah. And if everything is just a story, that's like all you're ever going to be, which is a a story and a fantasy. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. But that's it's really just LA. I swear to fucking God. And it's not just the famous man. It's not. It's just every man in this city. At all. Yeah. No. You grew up in Vegas and that is Mm. just like you were my favorite first friend that I ever met that and I like went to Vegas when we first met like met all of your friends and like we had this whole Vegas era but Mm -hmm. I want to know about like your early life in Vegas and what point basically got you to move to LA like bullet points obviously okay a lot of people who are from Vegas maybe had a different experience than the friend groups and circles that I ran in but I can't fathom having any experience really other than mine with like the cards I was dealt and the situations yeah. around me and people often talk about Vegas they're like what did you grow up in a hotel and it's kind of like <laughs> my experience was kind of like yeah a little like you know I, I just feel like Vegas is a city that is ran on sex, money and drugs Actually. And alcohol and all of the negative things. It's it's ran on. It's like the darkest parts of yes. the earth are like they all come together. That's how the money is ran. That's that's how the lifestyles are ran. That's yeah. how every parent that's raising every kid was you know raised and brought up in the values they have, and it it just shows. And I think that it's a city that you grow up really f-ing fast in because of that. One thousand because you're exposed to it so much younger, and it's normalized so much heavier. Right. You know, mm-hmm. so I think I, in a lot of ways, I was like 21, at like 14. Correct. And yeah. it, that just, and it made for a lot of really good stories, which then made for good YouTube videos, which then made for a good career. Correct. Right. Which, Correct. you know, is cool. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, I remember being 10 and thinking like, why would these people raise me here? Like it, like it was just like, I love these people, those people, those yeah. fucking people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't understand why anyone would really ever raise a kid there. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, but y'all like you, Amari, Ari, like all of your friends from Vegas, like you guys have such um, brutal, um, blunt approaches at life and are such like bold people because mm. y'all were raised in some like havoc. And it I, is a very honest city, though. And I like mm-hmm. that's why I love you guys yeah. so much. Like you, what you see is kind of what you get with Vegas in a lot of ways. And I think that is what like made me the way I am. Wait, did you yeah. grow up with Ari and Amari? I grew up with Amari, like, okay. very heavily. Like, he is, like, my sibling. Right. I met Ari when I was 20, 20, okay. when I was 20. Smoking um, And car. we grew up in the same circle, but I okay. just never, like, I'd known, like, of him and stuff. And, like, we'd known of each other, but we'd never met. And then we just really clicked. And we were just, right. you know, growing up in Vegas just brought us together in, like, a lot of ways. This is the segment called Off Our Chest. Um, we do this every episode where we... Talk about something this week that happened to us that we want to get off our chest. It could be negative. It could be positive. Um, and I never have one. Yeah, you don't. Ever. You so I will think it, about though. it when Kate does hers. Do Not you have gonna- one? I l- allow me to think I have a problem. Do you guys ever, I don't know if this is the substances or what it is, but like, I don't know what I did this morning. I can't remember this past week right now. Gun to my head. Well, yeah, what did I, I do? To, I have to think about my off my chest, like 
the whole day. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. So, do you have one? I got one. I got one. So here's the thing of it all. Um, my off my chest is like actually positive this week. Wait, which is crazy. This is, this is your first yeah, positive yeah, yeah. off your chest. You look so pretty right now. Okay. Um I'll cry. so we start making out. And so <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> <Thank God. laughs> so basically. I would watch, by the way. I would, would just you really? sit right here. Really? If like y'all just started Patreon, talking. subscribe. Um, okay. So I feel like growing up, I was like this height in sixth grade, right? And um, I feel like a lot of, not I feel like, a lot of men when like talking about me would always say something like, oh, like I can't handle that. Like I can't handle you. And so the other day a man said that. Like he couldn't handle you? Yeah, just like, I don't know if it's like my personality or like that I'm like tall like and Hitler. not skinny. Yeah, 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 something like that. But they're just like, oh, I can't handle all that. And um, I remember growing up when I would hear that, I'd be like, oh my God, no, like handle me. Like I'll lose weight. Like I'll stop talking so much. Like oh blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then, That's so horrible. the other day a guy said that right. like in a group and I was like, no, like, thank God you know that. Like, leave me alone if you don't think you can handle this. Because I am a lot and, like, I like it. Yeah. Word. So I feel like I'm really learning to, like, take up space. Like, not only, like, physically, like, love being tall, but also, like, emotionally and, like, voicing what I want. And I'm like, yeah, no, you can't handle me. And Word. damn straight. And I'm not going to, like, feel bad about that. I love that. Word. That's why I have my chest. Like, so, so, oh my so God. much. <laughs> wow. I think that's such a common thing Girl. where, you know, women are just growing up. Like, men, usually men. Mm -hmm. Or make you feel like you're too much if you're loud or if yeah. you're yeah. crass or if you're, you know, whatever. But it's yeah. like if Trends. someone's telling you that you're not enough, you're talking to the wrong person. And really? I'd love to yeah. see you fucking own that. And why would yeah. that's, that has to be the biggest, like, what do, what do men think they're doing when they say that? I don't know. Because it's like if someone said that to me, I'd be like, okay, pussy. Literally. Like, right. I would just get they the. can't like, handle a nasty bitch. Like, and I mean that and then I'm just way. imagining them in bed like quivering and literally like it's like yeah you really ate with that one yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> I just don't that's crazy damn yeah, so. that yeah. similar thing happened to me the, a few nights ago I was hooking okay. up with this Hawaiian guy and like and um after we were just like putting on our clothes and like talking and he was just like it's like he's like hooking up with you is so different for me. And I was like, okay, why? He's like, you're okay. just so big. Bye. No. And I look at him, I go, I'm not like, first of all, I'm not like an over Big is person. just crazy too. Big, big is, is just, just like, I'm big like, is so crazy. As a tr like, let me just clarify. As a trans person, I have these thoughts all the time and I get it, but it's like, that reverses my like, advances that I've made in my like, insecurity journey. But like, and he's like, no, 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 I didn't mean that. It's just like, you're just like a, like a, just a big person. Oh and I'm like, like yeah, shut your fucking Stop saying big. Stop. Like you're Mrs. Doubtfire. Stop. Like that's just fucking Not insane. kidding. <laughs> like big is crazy. Like no, ready to go to Turkey, get the hammers did, yeah. in my joints. Did like, you in hit Turkey. him with a you're so small? Um, oh, I did cool. actually. Okay. Thank God. I think I said something along the lines of like, well, that's just because you're not tall enough or something. But Thank like, God. why do they say that? Why? I get gigantic. Whoa. Oh. Okay. I Syn <laughs> Synonyms. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> big and that's just that's absolutely absolutely yeah. fucking insane. Like, have they never been with a woman over like five five? Have you ever seen anyone <laughs> else ever? <laughs> ever. I ever. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I hate big. I hate big. I just don't think anyone should actually ever call anyone big unless they're no. like Shaquille O'Neal. At all. Like, Shaquille O'Neal's big. Like he I can hear that. Yeah, 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 and he's confident like, in it. Like it, but just uh, yeah, no, and I don't think anyone yeah. should actually ever call a woman big. I don't want to feel like Shaq in bed. But that's not my off my chest because I don't want to, you know, put my energy towards that. I had a this is so dark or not dark, but it's just like kind of disgusting. I have had this like cyst slash lump in my arm for <laughs> like six seven years, and um. I decided one day, a random Tuesday, to call a dermatologist and go get it removed. I was, like, very manic. I was like, get it out of me. Because I just, like, didn't know the tea on it. I didn't know, like, if it yeah. was cancerous. I didn't know, it's like... like pay rent. I'm yeah. not kidding. Mm. Pay the rent. I take mm. Zelle, Venmo, Apple... You know, mm. So, I go. I didn't expect them to remove it the same day. But they put this shot in my arm. And then they, like... It hurt so bad, the shot. But then I was numb. They literally did like surgery it was a knife were you they, watching no i had to turn away i would yeah. pass out i, I yeah. it was like a literal scalpel 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 i don't know they cut me open they remove it 
she picks it up with like the little tool and she puts it in my face. She she's like, look at look at look at. I was like, oh shit, and it was big. So I was like, damn. Cunt. Glad did you removed. keep it? Did you like make a little earring out of it or something? Yeah, it, it's it's actually getting freeze dried right now. Um, <laughs> I think it's so crazy how doctors and like dentists and shit do shit like that. Like, I think there should be consent of like, do you want to yeah. see this? Yeah, they didn't ask. Like it's no, show and tell. Not really, but I mean, I was I was gonna ask. I almost took a picture too. Um, Shut up. But um, she stitched me up and um, I went on my merry way. And I knew I couldn't be wearing like things with sleeves. Or without sleeves, because that's just like track I had. I had she thought <laughs> I didn't tell her I got my sister moved, and she like thought I had like track marks in my arm. Damn, she thought she just went and shot up. Yeah, yeah, and we came up with uh, TMT. Yeah, track, track mark, mark Trav, Trav. but um, <laughs> <laughs> still not my off my chest. But I um, <laughs> there. <laughs> we're gonna be done by the time I finish with this. Okay, so I um. You know, I, I'm not wearing uh, sleeveless things because it's just, like, ugly. And mm -hmm. I finally get the stitches removed the other day. First of all, annoyed that they weren't dissolvable. I had to go back to fucking Poissy Doi Noi and Boy. Pasadena. Um, I and, was calculating. I was almost there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry the one. And um, they had this, like, PA physician's assistant or something that was, like, in training. And she, they're like, oh, she's going to remove your stitches. And I'm like, oh, fuck. No one, in, no one should I'm, be in training over there. Uh, no never one should be in training asked, over there. I never asked for a fucking rookie to remove I stitches. understand that, like, Sonic, like, they're a little footy on the rollerblades. <laughs> and it's like, oh, they're in training. Right. But, like, I just don't think that should be... In, well, in a doctor's office. No. They thought she was just going to do the tweezers and just like remove the thread, right? And she gets the first titch out. She's like, I got the first one out. She was like, almost like jumping for joy. I was like, you have never done this. Um, and we get At that point, I'm such a like, give me the tweezers. Bitch. I'm, I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. Please. One thing about me. Yeah. So then we get to the second stitch. She goes, well, it looks like there's a problem here. I guess like my skin like healed over the stitch. And she starts with the tool starts like digging and digging and trying to get the stitch. Oh I start God. gushing blood in the middle of this dermatologist's office. She like breaks the barrier of my skin where I was cut open again. It starts <gasps> spewing blood. And I'm like, I literally look at her and I go, can you get the fucking doctor? Oh. Absolutely. And she's like, yes, 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 yes. I'm sitting there, I'm bleeding. I have an alcohol swab. I'm just like Shoot. trying to get like, I'm like so fucking annoyed. And then the doctor comes in. She goes, I am so sorry about no. that. And she's no, like, not. She actually was. I, I don't, don't care. No, you're not. Yeah, no, at all. Shouldn't have done it. I'm too nice to people. No, I get it though. It's like an uncomfortable yeah. situation. You need. You now need I medical need, attention. I need the doctor. It's vulnerable. Yeah. It's vulnerable. Um, she would have needed stitches. Yeah. So she pulls it out, and um, I stopped bleeding. I didn't need another stitch apparently because it was only a little opening. And then um, I was on my merry way. And then I put a bandage over it. And then I got a spray tan. And then the spray tan went over the bandage. And now I have a little bandage spot. And it's never gonna go away another week without fucking sleeveless shit. I hey. hope you could rock it though, honestly. Yeah. And and really. I love a, something like that, like a slight little something, because then that leaves so much opportunity for a conversation. To wildly lie. Oh. <laughs> oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, so well, I, they know you just got true. shot. True. Do you have one? Off. My, well, to be fair, had I known in the beginning of this about off my chest, okay. I would have saved um, my like, little shoot experience right. today for I just really think that we need to start, people need to start providing resumes with their mm. Los Angeles jobs. Um, or certification. Yeah. In or England. just one of those. She's um, out here be doing hair without a cosmetology license. Um, oh, which all of them. Oh, my God. Oh. I have an off my chest. Oh. Oh, oh, I can I, see it. I, I <laughs> I'm I'm really livid, actually. Oh, I hey. can make this forty minutes, or I can make this one minute, and that's like where I'm at. Not kidding. Find the balance. No, oh yeah. wait, we can't. A oh true. Oh, I'm in a phase of my life, and I think this goes hand in hand with sobriety, okay. with realizing people's true colors and seeing people for who they really are, and okay. understanding that people. And not just with sobriety, just in general, that people may no longer serve you in life and friendships yeah. and just. I, I also just, I really, in LA and in life, I've always let a lot of people in and that I didn't need to let in. Yeah. And it, it fucked me over in a lot of ways. And I'm trying to start keeping my circle smaller and protecting myself in a lot of ways and just grow up in that regard. And Feel I've you. had some people I've cut off and, me um, too. and just recently I've really, I've been distancing myself from things that I feel like don't serve me. And I had a, I guess a friend of mine, a former friend of mine, I don't know, I'm in limbo right now with what the term is, mm -hmm. but 
today, essentially, you all, you know how it is in the group chat with your girls. Mm -hmm. I don't know if a lot of people do this, but like often you have the text group chat and the Instagram group chat. Mm -hmm. Because on Instagram, sometimes you want to send people stories and you want to send memes and you want to send certain things to talk about with your friends. And this person was in our Instagram Instagram group group chat and... I lightheartedly sent one of my ex's stories. And you know how that is as well. It's like, at least in this situation, I am beyond cool with him. We're friends. Like, Mm -hmm. I would never want him to think that I... I I have nothing but love from afar for this person. And... But obviously, I like to gig and gag with the girls. I'm right. I don't think there's anything, like, realistically, like, aggressive about that. Yeah. Yeah. And so he posted a story... That I thought the group chat might have some have a giggle have uh, or have some lore about you know okay. what I mean so vague it's not and a crime yeah I'm like dying I, to know what the story is but I, I well I send the story um we don't have to get into what the story yeah. was I wish we could here but then now I'm dragging everyone into this right. um no, I send the story and this friend tells my ex and shows him like look Tana was talking shit about you the, essentially the, yeah and he today hit me up and was like, I heard you sent my story to your group chat of your best friends. So I was Ew. like, and I was like, oh, one of my best friends is a narc. I soon realized who told <laughs> him an that. Op. An absolute <laughs> fed. I, and I'm just gagged by it. And that was me just literally explaining the logistics. I, I decided I'm not going to be a fucking raging cunt right now and just. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're just explaining what scalp happened. Scalp this person. Yeah. Viscerally with I, my words. I think that like it opens a big can of worms. It, if I yeah. could, I is a big one. I I share I that can that with you. Yeah, those. I'll open it with you. But here, look, <laughs> like I think there's just like an automatic code when it comes to like best, best friend group chat. Yeah. That, Fucking like duh. it doesn't leave ever, ever. And to just make someone else feel like I'm like really shitting on yeah. them when it's like not like, you know how it is with your best friends. You're, you send a story and you giggle. I still have absolute love for this person. I would yeah. never want them to think that right. I like am making fun of them to a group mm-hmm. of other people. And that's why you trust your best, right. best friends mm. in the fucking group chat. And fucking GC. Dude, yeah, I think sorry. that's my off my chest. I don't even. <laughs> Well, yeah, we have a great one today. Yeah. But it's, I think everything shows you what you need to know. Did you like remove mm. yourself from the group chat or? Honestly, I haven't done shit about it. I've just been ruminating and deciding if I want World War Three or just to that's good. You're keep pausing. it pushing. That's, that's great. Um, super. Yeah. Um, but we definitely, do need a, we definitely do need a smaller group chat in that case. Um, but For real. I think that's my off my chest. Truly. Yeah, it's, okay. Even when it's small, it's still, it's wild. I don't even know. Yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm pissed dude. now, you can tell. Um, okay, so we have, we posted a story today, and you reposted, so thank you. We got a lot of questions from your people as well. Um, we have fan questions for you. Okay. And like fan topics that we're going to go through a few. Um, you guys are so organized, segment really? questions. Oh my God. I love it. I, I almost want to like, I wish we were like loose looser no it's amazing but it's just like i can't work that way personally no it's a i swear to god yesterday i think i farted into the mic for an hour and didn't have one topic people would pay for that not getting (laughs) not getting um (laughs) someone asked how did we meet do you yeah i want to know t i want you to i want you to tell your side this is where my memory you my horror really don't know where we met i know that i grew up i watched you on o2l i've always thought you were an icon we met on Twitter. Yes. I think it was allegedly at a VidCon. It was. But my first memory of you, I swear to God, and this is with a lot of my best, best friends for life. My first memory is not meeting them. It's just like a first, like my first memory with you is like we're drunk in your apartment. At the Camden? Mm-hmm. With the bald cat? Mm-hmm. Not kidding. <laughs> at all. <laughs> you should have met the bald cat. I would sleep cat. on your kitchen island. <laughs> yeah, no, we, um, we just met at VidCon and then I walked into her room and- you were with your manager and you were with Isabella and there was a bottle of Maker's Mark uh, whiskey. You were being styled by, I like, rec- I like sent you over like one of my stylists and you were like getting in, like fitting into dresses and stuff uh, for your meet and greet. And we all just met and it was just super easy. Like the first thing we did together was take a shot. But beautiful. I do think, I think one of the 
best parts about this is like there are so many friendships that I've had like that that are based off of alcohol or based off of partying. Yeah. And to along that way, like find that there is a true connection beyond the substance because now it's completely different. It's not yeah. even about, I don't walk in your house. We don't have to take shots. Yeah. It's so different. So I think it's just like, I've had met a lot of friends that I've taken shots with mm. that. It's just like, that's all. It, it that's all there. Yeah. That's good for in your life. That you is know? a special. I 100% agree. The alcohol was just there. It was, it was the lore. What would you say is your top, top accomplishment that you've, you know, accomplished? And what is your main goal that you haven't reached yet? That's a really great question. This is your slang. Um, honestly, I feel like my top accomplishment is not one thing. I think it. I more so just, I commend myself for making it out of the hand that I was dealt. I often think about the life that I probably should have lived with the household and the money and the parents that I had in the city that I was raised in and, Right. You know, making it out and making a life for myself and a future for myself and finding passions and dreams and not still being that, you know, suicidal, undertaken care of right. child with no, no, you know, no hope and no road in front yeah. of her. And I, my, that, yeah. It's biggest, a huge accomplishment yeah. to and get it, out of such like a situation like that. Yeah. And I, I know I did that all by myself and that, I, that makes me happy. Absolutely. Like, yeah. like. Truly, though, like the jumpstart of everything, like people will say like, oh, in clout chaser or like, oh, you're just like, but at like the core of your career. And honestly, I would say mine, too. Like we didn't suck people off to get there. Yeah. Like it, you truly like mm. you. <laughs> no, I don't think I don't think so. I think like like you said, like the Vegas lore and like all the stories that you had mm. and like you used all your negative experiences and converted them into a positive life. Thank you. And that's like really, and I know a lot of people oh, recognize nice. that. I think I had a lot of my life where a lot of people made me feel like they made me or they're the reason that I was, you know, and now managers, I can, agents, can friends, yeah, boyfriends. No. It's, it's, and now I like, I can look back and know, like, no, like that girl had a mission and with no really, permission, a mission with no permission. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. Um, Yeah. And I, I really like that. Um, What's like, do you have, is there something that you haven't accomplished yet? Like there's a, a I magazine mean, cover or like anything like you have? I can't wait to release books, like a lot of books. Like okay, I, yeah. I had a conversation or a meeting the other day about a memoir and I'm, I can't wait for one of many and I just can't wait. It's can like, you spill a little? Are you, aren't you like? I can spell. No, spill. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can, can spell. You spell you're, one smart, you're one of the smartest bitches with um, spelling and language. Trust me, I know. Um, can I spill a little? I mean, I think that so there are a lot of stories of a lot of shit that it has happened to me in the last, my entire life, my childhood as well and growing up, but also just the last 10 years in Los Angeles and yeah. a lot of things that happened to me that like a lot of people wouldn't recover from and a, just a lot of fucking shit that... Yeah. In my head, I, I think I knew even at that time in the back of my head, like, this isn't a YouTube video. This isn't a podcast topic. This will go in my book one day. This is your and life. I think yeah. that that's kind of the thing. And I mean, in a perfect world, I'm airing everyone the fuck out. Like, right. you know, I, like I would use names and all. It's just I have to okay. have to figure out the legal shit of that, you like know, and what how that's going to be. Slander, and you know? I also just think I've lived like nine lives and don't know how to fit it into one book. So what is yeah. the first book and what is the second? What's the third? And yada yada but i could see you just being like oh oh my god just converting everything and just becoming so rich and just being like this fucking author i am yeah. excited. oh my god like in a fucking pantsuit like on stage at like a forbes convention yes. like so author like, oh my god airing these, hoes out. airing these you hoes could honestly out. just use fake names and just like be so painfully obvious that's exactly yeah but like, I, why not? i've done that and gotten sued left and right really already. oh yeah. yeah oh yeah it's because if you that. like if you inch yeah towards that like i don't know what the fucking laws are with that but yeah if you if it's clear who you're talking about you might as well just say their name and people will see that was regardless yeah. okay mm -hmm. well on that similar note what would you tell little tana if you could say one thing to her or like a few things work work question i i mean i think i was an adult by the time i was like i was just always an adult like i was raising myself and 
that in turn makes you very hard on yourself. And I was making a lot of mistakes for those reasons. And I think I was very hard on myself. But in reality, it's like, no shit. Like, no one fucking raised you. Right. Of course. Like, give yourself some grace, I think. Would definitely, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll all it'll all be okay. Are yeah. you better at giving yourself grace today? Yeah, like fi like finally. Good. But th that's within the last even like two years of my life. I would say too, because I've noticed in the past two years that like you're less. Yeah, something that I have noticed. But and it, I think I had to realize that that was about like rewiring thoughts, which everything is really. Mm -hmm. You know, even yeah. now, like at the end of the day, every single day, like I would just I could do a million things, and my brain would always go to like what I'm not doing, who, who's doing better. You know what I mean? What I didn't do or what like I I actively will sit there in my brain and like have to list everything I did do that day mm -hmm. to like go to sleep. And it's like, OK, like you focus on what you are doing, not what you're not right. doing and give yourself grace. You know? Yeah. Or yeah. Grace by PV Rex. Um, Please. I love that that song. Song. What's your Roman Empire? Oh. We need to know. Wow. <laughs> Forgot I have that. so many. V. Helen Keller. Oh, so many right. people and asked for us to talk about yeah, Helen Keller. I'm like, I, I, I'm just so wild. I know everything there is to know about Helen Keller. Amelia Earhart's another good one. The Brangelina yeah. breakup. The Danimal sweepstakes. Oh, <laughs> not. Did you ever do the Subway sweet sweepstakes where you would like you just get a drink and then you'd peel it off? I would go to oh. Subway and not getting two, three times a day just to get like to see if I would win the $200 one time I won the Oh, $200. I remember that. And McDonald's yeah. would do that too where you could like peel it off. I won the $200 one time. It was crazy. What? I, that like, is fucking crazy. I went Subway, I bought a drink and they gave me $200. I was like, what? Cash what? out of the register. Not kidding. What? That's fucking so unhinged. Jared from Subway came and spoke at my school. And <gasps> Wait, if you really pedo? think about that, that's yeah. quite problematic. Um, yeah. Everyone got out unscathed. Thank, thank God. God. Um, wow. Yeah. It was like right before his little scandal. I just remember being like, Wow, those pants don't fit you. At you know, like maybe he did the thing and he's all. out of there. Which and it is, dude. I'm sure you can eat healthy some way at Subway, but like that whole campaign was so crazy where Jared was holding the pants out yes. and it was like Subway so healthy. Like, no, it's not. Yeah, I loved f***ing up a foot long. Yeah, like that. It Subway is like a you fuck that shit up. Right. It's just such a dark, a meatballs. like weird mm. thing. Like it's just the fact that like to like I was I've just been watching so many like. Epstein doc shit too and they that's always find right. every that's such a lore and it's just like so, like they put themselves in these situations in these environment with like all of these children and it's just like nobody knew at the time and it's just like you look I think so many people had to have known yeah and now people lie to cover their asses for sure I so want that tea. is there any like imagine you went on a tart trip and there was just like kids everywhere you'd be like oh right you know. Right. You'd be like, hmm. That was an insane analogy. I hate 2024. <laughs> yeah, like, I can cut that if we want. Sorry, Maureen. <laughs> it's okay. Not kidding. I don't think she's not doing any of that. So she checks yeah, out. Yeah, marry a kid. Yeah. Um, do you have any like weird Illuminati, Hollywood, like conspiracy experiences besides the fucking Bella Thorne? Yeah, thing? everyone thinks Bella Thorne's in the Illuminati and she's she's definitely not. I think it's real to an extent. I think there are, there's a certain, I don't necessarily know if I think the Illuminati is real, but I think there's a lot of weird culty sh in Hollywood. Yeah, I think yeah. there's a level of like elite people that run a lot of the media and the record labels and like the news channels and like I oh, think yeah. they're all like in cahoots yes. with each other communicating on like what kind of programming they're going to push. But as far as like the Satan aspect. I think and, there's like, two sides. You think there's two different types? I feel like I've met a couple celebrities that I know they do some like blood shit and they, they do, do But weird. is it a part of like yeah. a bigger thing or is it like the same elite? Like is it all one group? Like, it's like, like is it just their friends in their house and they all like the satanic shit and it's not. Because like with music artists, like like with Lil Nas, for example, or like Kesha back in the day, and like everyone's like starting the conspiracy that, that everyone that does a triangle or everyone that does this is like right. a part of Satan. And it's like, why wouldn't you do that in your music videos now? Like people are yeah. going to talk about it. Yeah. Like I think like Lil Nas like running with this Satan shit is mm -hmm. like, does it mean that Those they're really, cat. yeah, does it mean yes. that they're really satanic or is it like y'all are getting played and every news and yeah. every Forbes and everything yeah. is talking about it just because you put... Yeah, I think there's just levels in all kinds of different fucking groups. Like, I don't... You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I definitely think there is a weird satanic, culty, weird side of elite Hollywood that is weird. And I think there's also just everything's a cult when, when it comes down to like the executives and the blackmail and then people that have the power to make anything happen. And, you know, I don't know. Have you ever seen a ghost? Or like had an experience with like a ghost? Have you had sex with a ghost? That she I has. have. She has. Wait. Me too. Wait, tell me. Wait. Oh, Allegedly. you're talking about like this succubus shit, right? Yes. I we did yes. not talk we about We literally this. talked about this two episodes Yes. Ago. I've never met someone that had sex with a ghost, only been eaten out by a ghost. No, I've had, I, like, I've had ghosts. <laughs> my I, sex with is crazy, though, because I wouldn't even say, like, I was like, oh, my God, fuck me. It was more like, and I've had full body orgasms from it, like, several times. No, like, woke up I couldn't coming. believe I busted. No, straight up. ghost. And I was Wait, like, so, damn, these men really, like, are out here no, physical. No, where are they? Yeah, and. Why can't they be on Earth? They're yeah. transphobic. Where's my, where's my bus? He's, no, you don't want it, though. It was so, it was so, it's so scary. Like Wait, can you sleep paralysis, and yeah. I, I've had it happen to me like like probably twenty times. Whoa! Like God's favorite. No, no, I, no, <laughs> no, no. I would much rather. I'm, like, I'm so jealous. I'd much rather go manual and just get out a vibrator because this is it's not the journey. Well, you had a really weird phase. I remember 2017, 2018, mm. where you like were really struggling with like falling asleep, and I yeah, feel like I still do. That's why I feel like you still have like such a. I have really bad insomnia, but the insomnia issue. makes sense. There's, you know what I mean. Like this was like. And it started happening to Ashley when we would, only when we would live together and it was just super weird or we'd have oh, the same exact so dreams weird. or it would just, I mean, you know, the people like the difference between sleep paralysis and a dream is like, you know, your body's paralyzed, but your you're mind awake. is dreaming, yeah. Yeah. but like you're awake and like you feel it. And I had bruises that would happen like from oh. this shit. Like it was a really weird time and just, oh my God, I, I hope it never, ever happens ever again. But oh like, God. I would just be having a regular dream and then people I know would turn into these big, crazy demons and then the demons would be like, fucking you and whatever. And then, wow. but and you'd be paralyzed it, and I'd yeah. wake up like screaming. Like me and you on 4th of July with the fireworks on mushrooms. <laughs> that was my worst mushroom trip to date ever. I don't know. That was the scariest thing in my life. Well, I'm really sorry. But you too. Honest. Yeah, but it wasn't like that. I just felt like a male energy, and then I felt someone like bring my legs up to ninety degrees, and I was like, "What the hell?" And then I like started levitating. I'm kidding about that part, but literally, I was, I literally, I was just gonna ask you in real life or in the dream. <laughs> no, but <laughs> literally, with it. I, with it. I felt like cut this out. I felt like three pumps and then a bust. Well, but you said it was like one of the best busts of your life. It right? was because I've never busted from penetration. It's Have way you? harder. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's way more rare. How do people do it? I don't feel anything. But that was just crazy to me because it's, I wasn't touching my vagina. Like I wasn't nothing. Like you know what I mean. Oh, like it was just it like was just like yeah. Like I just lore. came from like whatever <laughs> happened. Lore. Like I don't even <laughs> understand lore. at all. I used it totally wrong. I've Wait, only I used it wrong. Can't believe you had bruises. The, I I made a whole story time about this. It was when we were in the townhome with Elijah and Christine and. I was oh saying in the God, other one and I woke up TBT. and I had like fingerprint bruises. And I mean, I guess you could say that in my sleep, I just like yada, yada. I don't, I in the like dream, that's what was like happening to me and or like what was happening to me. And then I would like have, I don't know. And it's weird because I'm kind of like, I try not to get into all the like ghosts and demons. Yeah. And I try to just like, I think ignorance is it. bliss when it comes to that. Shit. Yeah. So I'm going to like pretend like it's whatever. But I, I had a lot of weird experiences with my dreams and with sleep oh. paralysis and with shit that felt demonic as Thank for you sure. for telling me that because I yeah. feel really weird Affirmed, about it. Sometimes. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Like, no, everyone's always like, what the hell? And I'm like, all right. Same. I just stopped bringing it up. Le okay. And for more sure. people need to talk about it. Has anyone ever came from a demon? Okay. <laughs> like, it's just, there's no need, really. So it's. Ever. Yeah. Right. But we yeah. can start a support group. Yeah. There Please, are others. I'm begging. There are mm, others. I'll okay. be left yeah. out of that gladly, though. Okay. Well, well, shit, guys. I okay. think we did it. I think we fucking did that. Yeah, we fucking did that. Thank you so for are you me just on. like you're just on crazy mode? Like yeah. you're just going to tour in like two days and you're just gonna be gone for like months? Yeah. I'm just like I can't even believe that you're here right now. Like, it's one of those you. things no, that you can't process you. or fathom. So I'm just going with the flow and mm -hmm. I wanted to do your podcast before I left. Do you appreciate yeah. it so much. I wish so I badly I didn't do what I did before this and we were just doing this all day. All. And I'm just so proud of you guys and i am like the number one supporter of this podcast and i know it's it's just it's going to the fucking moon and i'm so excited to see the journey and doing a podcast with someone just does bring you guys together and it's a special I bond know. and it's so fun like getting to text each other like oh my god i have a fucking topic like yeah. this yes, that's what we did. our whole text yeah, yeah, yeah. conversations are just like topics and just like 
that we experience right like, we never talk about that and the power it, it's just it's fun it's yeah. like someone it's so wrongs fun. you you have a platform you have a and literally and people started like guys are like telling me now like they like see that yeah. on the podcast like don't you talk about me on your podcast and I'm like oh so and you want like, to talk about me on and your podcast you say, I talk so much I stopped telling people I won't I was like that. that's actually the topic oh my god yeah. perfect yeah you you said that yeah. I'm not and now I'm gonna yeah, yeah. you called it's me a big get. bitch yeah like, th- we're gonna air it out and we're gonna air it out Taylor Swift said it if you don't want me to write bad songs about you don't do bad things no literally okay so we're gonna close this out with some motherfucking gratitude kate what are you grateful for this week oh wow okay um they really do it over here i've never been grateful on my podcast one time ever we have to close it off with something positive because we just talked about demons seriously Uh, no literally okay so grateful (laughs) right (laughs) i'm grateful for you but i am i'm really grateful for you coming on this you are like a real ass bitch and i can feel it you're so sweet yeah i'm i'm from boston i I know a real when I so she's from, she's hey. from Mass. I love an East Coast bitch. It's like the same energy as Vegas kind yeah, of and it works. You're real. Um, and I'm really grateful that I am gonna go on a date tomorrow night. <gasps> Not I'm kidding. Stepping out and I might break my celibacy if, wait, if really? he's cool. But you really? know, I can't do, wait to hear about all it. All he has to do is ask me a question and they can't do that. So seriously. We we'll uh, yeah, not grateful. kidding. Like Stop flapping about like whatever Z list yeah. celebrity you have. No, because I'm begging. Um, okay. Ask me oh, how my yeah. day was. I'll uh, bust it right there. Uh, no, literally. <laughs> not kidding. A bust will happen. A Balesa um, deal will come. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I start feeling horny, I'm like, whoa, where did this rose come from? Beautiful. <laughs> not kidding. Gorgeous. But yeah, just grateful for you. Guys. Grateful that we're all like weird gals in a good way. I yeah. love it. Like, I love a weird I like to be weird. Yeah. So fucking weird. You have no idea. And that's that on that, sis. Um, <laughs> sis. Sis. Thank God it's gone. Okay. With that. I um, I guess I want to close that I'm great. Well, I'm very grateful for both of you. Obviously, something really amazing happened. Um, I just got, I like closed a really cool collaboration with a really fun brand. Yeah. That Such a fun brand. So I iconic. It's so iconic. And I can't stop thinking about it and planning it. And it's just iconic in the beauty world. And <laughs> so they've always been so supportive of the LGBT community and it's just like such an honor to it's like a year long thing so I'm just like it's gonna be my whole year I'm so excited about it um I'm just really grateful that like I get to do what I love for work I am I loved that first of all and I'm so proud of you this brand is insane and you just are like a fucking businesswoman as well like she is so many of the deals that you close and the things that you do are because the work you put in and the way you communicate with the brand and you know you ideate great content like it's they should be just as grateful to have you like it is I mean I think the sobriety is a huge aspect like I have never I was never like this until I got sober Mm -hmm. because the work addiction is an easy one to pick up I not kidding Mm -hmm. that all that I'm like, I can't do anything else. I can't replace it. So I'm literally just going to put it in nicotine, caffeine, and work. Okay, slay. No, literally. Nicotine, caffeine, money, and dick. Not kidding. Causes a huge panic attack. And then you got to like, it's a cycle. Yeah. It's like, well. It's real. All right. Close Um, us off. Top us off. (laughs) I don't mean to piggyback. I will top you off. I don't mean to piggyback. (laughs) Um, Christ. Off of what you both said, but I am leaving um, my home and my friends and a lot of what I know for a, what feels like the unforeseeable future. And while I am Truthfully. so excited, I, and I am so busy, I wanted to do like a going away dinner and a bunch of shit like that. And I just don't have the time. So yeah. even moments like this that I get to see my friends before I leave or just feel comfortable and have fun before I go. Like, I'm really grateful for this moment and this evening and this end to my day and seeing you and just this before sending me off correct that was literally like i i just spoke rubik's cube but <laughs> I, you, I'm love, grateful. no i got it it was love i'm grateful and i love you, love you thank too. you for having me on you guys. Boy, thanks for coming ah!